Hello and welcome to the second part of our Iceland to Boston trip report. If you haven't seen the first part, stop the video and check the description where we have linked to part 1. For those ready to continue our journey, we look at the middle part of our adventure where we visited the incredible island of Greenland, where we visited the port of Nantlek after sailing through the incredible Prince Christian Sund. Upon leaving Greenland, we would have two days on the open waters sailing across the Labrador Sea to Canada, and that will be the focus of our next video, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified of part 3. So without further ado, let's look at our all too brief visit to Greenland. For those who don't know, Greenland is the largest island in the world. It's located in North America, but thanks to being part of the Kingdom of Denmark, it is also an overseas territory of the European Union. It is also one of the most northern countries in the world, and has one of the lowest population densities of any country. This will make the country a perfect destination for every cruiser, especially if you love to sunbathe on board your ship and explore big cities once on shore. But for those with a sense of adventure, and for those looking to take in the breathtaking beauty of nature, we would highly recommend going there if you have the opportunity. We arrived slightly later than planned to the entry into the Prince Christian Sound itself, as it was around 4 in the afternoon instead of the scheduled 2pm. But we knew that was going to be the case after a slight delay leaving Iceland. That late arrival would work in our favour as our exit from the sound would come at twilight and that would prove to be the perfect lighting to show off the mountains, waterfalls and glaciers of this special part of the world. But anyway, back to the beginning. When we arrived, we were met by another waiting ship, but after sorting out who would go first, we entered the waterway. Although not actually a fjord, it has everything that you would expect from sailing down a fjord, including steep sided mountains, glaciers, waterfalls, and breathtaking views at every angle. What is hard to explain and to show in this video is the incredible scale of everything around you. There are numerous mountains of over a thousand meters in height, and one of over 2,200 meters, and when you couple that with a relatively narrow channel, closeness you sail to the mountains, and the mammoth icebergs that get within inches of the ship, those of us who spent most of the full 5 hour transit of the sound on the helicopter pad at the very front of the ship will have memories that will stay with us forever. Unfortunately, there was some confusion in the early part of our adventure, as the helicopter pad wasn't open as expected, so everybody who wanted an outside view had to go to the top decks. That left them incredibly busy, but worse was to come, as he opened the front of the ship around 20 minutes in, leading to a huge rush to get out there before heading down to our first glacier. Thankfully, we managed to get out there, but we had to queue in the theatre for some time before stepping onto the helicopter pad, only to be met by a huge crowd of people. After sailing down an offshoot to a glacier, and then spending some time circling around to give everybody a view, the crowd started to dissipate, and we could spend the rest of the navigation standing on the edge of the platform and easily able to move from one side to another. Some of us stayed out for the whole journey, some would come and go, and some would nip back for food and drink, but the front of the ship was definitely the place to be for those who wanted incredible views, and a huge thanks should be said to Celebrity for giving us that opportunity. If you have sailed through the fjords in Norway or Alaska, you will have an idea of what it is to sail through the Prince Christian Sund, but after sailing through both of those areas ourselves, there is just something that a bit more special about the sound. When you look ahead, you either see a few channels that none of them quite seem big enough for you to sail along, or you see a narrowing channel that you wonder when the captain will realise you have gone the wrong way, but somehow you just keep sailing, and then a few hours later you are back in the open ocean. At that moment, dusk came down over the mountains, we headed to the aft of the ship, grabbed some tea, and simply took in the incredible sight of exiting the Prince Christian Sund. It was then time to get some sleep, before an early arrival into the port of Nanatalek. After about a week of being in the North Atlantic and only seeing blue skies and calm seas, we were welcomed into Nanatalek with grey skies and constant rain. We were docked just off the shoreline of the island the town sits on, which is in the mouth of the Tazemuit Fjord. That sees a constant flow of icebergs sail past the town, and makes for great photo opportunities once on shore. 
The tender ride is a short one from the ship to the shore, and we would be welcomed by a couple of local dogs, which would become a theme of our visit as everybody seemed to have dogs, and they were all friendly. At first glance, the port offers all you would want from a stop in an Inuit settlement, including brightly coloured wooden housing, a sense of remoteness and stunning natural beauty, but the town is so much more than that. A well-kept road circles the town and links all the main housing areas with the port, which makes it easy for locals to get from home to work and to the town's main shops and recreational areas with ease. It also makes it easy for those who want to take in the whole town whilst on shore, and that is exactly what we did. Most of those on shore simply walked around the harbour to the couple of shops in Nanatalek and then onto the Living Museum, which is the only tourist attraction on the island. There are a number of buildings including a church, a doctor's, a town hall, houses and more that are just left open for you to simply wander between and see them set up as they used to be. A number also have displays to teach you about the history of the town and artefacts including hunting equipment and canoes. After leaving the museum, we continued around the ring road to the far side of the town and this is where hardly any of our fellow cruisers would visit, which gave us a chance to really enjoy the town. We visited Nanatalek's old cemetery, its main football stadium, and saw some of the new housing developments before heading back into the port area and to the town's shops. It took some time to get onto the tender before we got back on board, grabbed some lunch, and looked forward to visiting the theatre that night. After two glorious days in open water, crossing the Labrador Sea, we arrived at St John's in New Finland, and it is there where we'll start the third, and final, part of our Reykjavik to Boston trip report. To make sure you get notified of when that goes live, subscribe to our channel below, and we'll see you next time.